Uh, okay, next we are going to talk about disruptive accelerators. So uh, what I mean here is are you leveraging things like machine learning, things like natural language processing, things like infrastructure as a service, right? If you still have servers in a closet at your office, you're doing it wrong. Right? Um, the neural networks, open source algorithms, data science, all of these things collectively are really important. If you're trying to um, start something brand new from the ground up without leveraging all the work that's come before you, um, it's going to take you a lot longer and you're not going to, you're not going to have time for the thing that is your true focus. Uh, and so uh, these are the kinds of things that are critically important. Like way back to 1987, the thing where I started where we talked about AutoCAD version 9, the thing that made AutoCAD version 9 better than AutoCAD version 8 was not the additional features that they threw in. It was the fact that it, it ran on a $2,000 PC instead of a $25,000 computer. And that was dramatically important. So find those exponential accelerators that can help you outperform uh, and leverage all the work that's come before you. So we're gonna we're gonna dig into uh, some of that a lot more specifically, and then I think we're gonna take a break from me talking at you, and we're gonna do a little exercise. Um, one of the things that's increasingly important as we build solutions is that we're building a solution that can learn and improve over time. Right? We're no longer in a world where you can make um, some piece of software and put it on a disk and mail it out to people or whatever, however people get things. Right? And then it's just static and people use it forever until you send them another CD. It's not a world like that anymore. And so the things that we build have to learn from the users that engage with it. It has to collect new information about people's choices and and learn over time from the patterns that it that it encounters. Uh, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about neural networks because neural networks are one of the ways that we can build systems that learn over time automatically. And neural networks, I think, is increasingly important. And so I want to make sure that people don't just say neural networks without having a real understanding of how it's working. Uh, and so the uh, first thing is neural networks are called that because it, it mimics something that's really happening in our brain, right? When, when I say, what is this? Target. Right. You say that instantly, right? It could be a pack of cigarettes. It could be, I don't know, other things that are shaped like that. But your brain just instantly like fires a bunch of neurons and says, okay, it's the right shape as a card deck. It's, it looks like I've seen something before. It's got that funny design on it. And your brain just lit one neuro, one neuron at a time figures out the answers to those questions. And it does it in milliseconds. And that's pretty cool. So neural networks are trying to, to replicate that in computer systems. And uh, one of the fun ways to investigate neural networks <laughs> is this. It's called Puppy or Muffin. You can Google it. There's actually a bunch of them. There's a dog or mop. Um, and there's like, uh, it's, it's pretty fun. So a neural network is really good at image recognition, right? When you look at this thing here, right, and decide if it's a puppy or a muffin, like what are the rules that tell you the answer to that question? I have no idea. I mean, that one and, and that one next to it, they look really similar. The eyes glisten, the, um, there's the right number of, of facial elements. Uh, it's really hard. And if you were building a, imagine building a dog or muffin engine, right? And to start it, you need you had an Excel spreadsheet, and you had to like write all the rules to look for. And you were saying like, if it's got three noses, right, or if it's got one nose and two eyes, then it might be a muffin, or it might be a dog. Like if you, if you built this rules engine, it would have ten thousand rules in it, and then a user trying to like add a new rule would have have a really hard time interacting with that model. And whether that user was doing it in Excel or some fancy web interface or with a Python script, it would be really, really, really difficult to write something that uh, authoritatively could tell the difference. What if the muffin is half eaten? Right? Do you think as a person you could still tell? Probably, right? What if the dog is facing the opposite way? Right? That those things are really, really hard to create a comprehensive rule set for. And so neural nets help you figure that out. Um, one of the ways neural nets is going to be interesting and, and extremely valuable is in self-driving car automation. When a self-driving car is driving down the road, it sees things the whole time it's driving. It has to identify like when is a person crossing the road, when is a truck cutting me off, when is the uh, whatever, when is the road curving. And one of the things that might happen is a plastic bag blows across the road. 
So your self-driving car, as it's driving in milliseconds, just like you knew this was a deck of cards, the car has to decide, like, is this a soccer ball? Is this a person that just fell off their bike? Is it a bag? Like, what should it do? Should it just hit the bag? Or should it, like, slam on the brakes? Like, those are hard questions, and neural nets are how this uh, will make that determination. So what does all that really mean? Uh, understanding what a neural net is is kind of confusing, and when you Google it, you get a bunch of pictures like this, and I'm like, ah, that doesn't explain anything. This is like, a, it's a net, I see that. Like, everything's connected, there are nodes. But nothing really tells you, like, what's happening in there. Um, so I'm going to try to explain that in a way that, um, that everyone here can understand. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do in order to do that is I'm going to flip it on its side. And the reason I flip it on its side here is because I think it will be easier to understand in this way, because... The room looks just like that. So that's a, this is an actual map of this actual room. And there are chairs. And we're going to build two neural nets right now. And this is going to be the blue neural net. And this is going to be the red neural net. And we are going to build neural nets that can identify a single card out of a deck of cards. Right? So the first thing is I need you and you to pick a card and don't show it to anybody. Um, all right, and then, so you guys are the output layer, okay? And then we're gonna have a five layer neural net, so you guys are layer one, and, or actually layer five, four, three, two, one, and you guys are the input layer, so you're gonna need those. And you guys are observers, sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're gonna build a five layer neural net that I think will be able to identify the cards that these two people have chosen. So neural nets need to be able to do something like say, this card is red or it's not. Right, so people in row seven, they're gonna be passing cards toward the front of the room and each of you is gonna have one of these rules. And if, if it passes your rule, you're going to put a, a green sticker on the card. And if it fails your rule, you're going to put a red sticker on the card. Does that make sense? Well, I'm going to say that again. So, Okay, but before we can do that, we have to train the neural net. Right? So that the neural net has to understand how to recognize this card. It has to know what things are true and what things are false about it. So the people on the aisle... So you two, and you two, and you two, and you two, and you two. Can you come forward for a second? Sorry, this won't be embarrassing. You're not going to have to talk or anything. Uh, OK, so and the two people that picked the cards. So this is the red side, right? So people on, on this side of the room, you're the red side. I need each person. OK, well, let's get blue side. Come on this side of the table so that it's clear. Okay. Uh, who's the person with the card? Yeah. Um, show the show your card to these five people. Right now, each of you gets to pick something that you think is true about that card from this list. You get one thing, and then you guys do the same thing. Look at his card, and now pick these rules. Each of you gets one rule. Think you got it? Yeah. All right. All right. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna test you each. So this is training a neural net. So when what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a card. This is the deck. So this card should be a failure because you still have your card, right? So raise your hand if this passes your test. No. Yes. Okay. So raise your hand just so the audience can see. Okay. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we have three yeses and two noes, and so I would, I think that that's a failure, and that should happen. Now, I could keep doing this, but I don't want to ruin the surprise. Uh, let's do your.
team as well. I'm going to grab this. All right, so this card should fail. Does it pass your test? No. Does? Yes. Yes. No. Okay, so two no's, three passes. So that's a failure as well. So what should happen is we're going to pass every other card in two decks from the back of the room to the front. And if it gets all the way to the front and it has five green stickers on it, it's the right card. All right? So now each of you go to your rows and show the other people in your row what their rule is. Okay, now everybody in the rows that didn't just go through that process, uh, make sure you remember the rule that you have to remember. So when you get a card, if it, if it passes your rule, it gets a green sticker. And if it fails your rule, it gets a red sticker. Everyone good? Okay, so people in row seven, you're going to pass all those cards forward and try to spread them across the room so that everyone gets cards, right? So divide them up and then just you're just passing them forward and it doesn't matter what order. Uh, and everyone put their stickers on the back of the card uh, so that we, it's easier to tell which all the green stickers, okay? Okay, now this is going to be a race to get two positives at the result in the, in the front on the output layer, red versus blue. So go, start passing them forward. <laughs>something that happened that I want to talk about for a second. So uh, on this side, uh, some of the teams had had reds about halfway through, and so they just stopped executing the neural net. Uh, Typically, you don't do that, because you might fail one early test, but still get like 80% confidence by going the rest of the way through the test. So even if even if you get some some negatives as a neural net is processing, let the other let the other layers of the neural net uh, execute their tests so that so that you'll understand one as these nodes see the rest of their um, the rest of their tests they get better and better and better at understanding what their tests should have been or or what they shouldn't have been. So I have I have one success over here. Uh, and it is an ace of spades, which does match the original, so that's good. Somewhere there's another ace of spades. Uh, I don't know where that is, but it failed. And then on this side we have, what, two, two all greens? We have three. <laughs> and our original card was the five of spades. So what we have are some five of clubs that slipped through our neural net. That's pretty close. That's a pretty good neural net. But what, what happens like this is as you're training a neural net and you run it the first few times, what you might realize is, oh, some of your rules are not quite right. Some of your rules are letting false positives slip through the cracks. And so you go back through and you take a look at the rules. Let's see. Less than six. This card is black. This card is odd. Right? This isn't really specific enough, so it doesn't really help that much. So greater than five, less than six, black, not a heart. So black and, oops, black and not a heart 
is not that useful together, but black and not a club would have been a better rule for this layer of the neural net. Does that make sense? Right, so you guys did pretty good. And then on this side, what do we have? We have this card is higher than queen. This card can be both high and low. Uh, this card is black. This card is the highest card. And here's your other one. Okay, so right. So what maybe happened is because it was the ace, the highest card rule was a little bit ambiguous, right? And so we we had that happen. So anyway, you guys did pretty good. Uh, that's that's really what's happening in a neural net. So nodes each have one rule that they execute. They don't know what the other team's rules are, or the other layers' rules are. They're trained to look for a very specific characteristic, and that's actually exactly what's happening inside your brain. Also, each neuron has one thing it's looking for and that's it and when it finds it it passes it to other people and eventually you get all the way down to the to the output layer and we decide did it meet all these rules or did it not and that's that's how neural nets work so as you are building tools to help your users identify problems and come up with recommendations and and solve um, solve interesting new problems in the world understanding how the neural networks will be really 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 helpful so the other thing is as you say complex things like AI and data science those things are very, very broad. It's, that's like saying I'm doing science, right? Without saying I'm actually doing geology or I'm doing mathematics, right? So start getting much more specific as you talk about some of these advanced analytics topics. And so I wanted to make sure everybody understood, understood what a neural net is so that as you have conversations and read articles about interesting things like that that are happening, you can take away and truly understand how that's working and how it's making solutions better. Um, by doing these things, we say a lot, that's called standing on the shoulders of giants. Right? If, you, if you grab an algorithm that solves a unique problem off the internet, right, because it's open sourced already, there's a bunch of people that are making sure that that is a flawless algorithm. They're making it better and better and better over time. They're making it more and more and more capable over time. So try to avoid the trap of building your own thing in a closed room with your team alone, and that's it. Right? So neural nets are one of those things that you can find lots of information about, apply it to your own unique solutions, and there are lots more of those. And I'll cover some more of those in my other talks. So those are disruptive accelerators.